So I've been wanting to do this for a long time to keep Nan's memory alive, although it doesn't take a whole lot to do that, considering how much everyone loves her. But Nan's nut horn recipe and how they are made, this is the shortened version, but it'll give you an idea. This was Nan's recipe, a special recipe. No other nut horns taste like Nan's. Um, so you can either copy this um, screenshot or call me and I will send you or email you a copy of her recipe. You want to make sure you have all the ingredients ahead of time and nice softened butter. You're going to start off with your seven cups of flour in a bowl. And while you are getting your ingredients together, you want to make sure that you get your yeast started in another little separate bowl. But to your flour, you are going to add butter, two cups of butter, or you can use one cup of butter and one cup of oleo. I know Nan used one of each. You're going to mix that together. Um, I just use a nice big spatula for that part, but eventually I will start to hand mix everything. You want to make sure that it is um, a nice crumbly dough-like um, mixture, like a pie dough mixture. And then to that, you are going to add your sour cream. And your sour cream is one cup of regular sour cream. You'll add that into this dough, mix it semi well. It doesn't have to be thoroughly mixed because you're still going to be doing a lot of mixing. But you want to mix that together. And of course, your dough is going to get much more sticky now, but that's okay. Um, when I get the sour cream in there, that's when I start to hand mix because um, it's just a little bit too hard with the spatula. So I hand mix that dough. Make sure I get that sour cream mixed in really good with the rest of the dough. And then I add my yeast mixture. My yeast mixture was a half a cup of warm water and one package of yeast, of the dry powdered yeast. And I add that together. Of course, the yeast has been sitting for a little bit to get nice and bubbly, so don't just put it together and throw it in. You have to let it sit for a little bit first. Now, once your yeast is in, you're going to add your eggs. You have four beaten eggs. You'll mix that in with your dough, and now it has become really sticky, which is fine. That's exactly what you want. You want that nice, sticky dough. At this point, you want to really make sure it's mixed well. I hand mix it, scrape down the sides, turn it over a few times in the bowl. You can touch it with your fingers a few times, and when you touch it, the dough should still be sticky, but it shouldn't be really sticking to you anymore. It should be sticky, but not that it's getting all over your hand anymore. Now you want to cover it and you want to put it in the refrigerator for six hours or overnight. Once your dough is in the refrigerator, then you can start working on your walnut mix. It's four cups of chopped walnuts fine, one and a half cups of sugar, a third of a cup of flour, and then about a half of a cup of water, but I add that just a little bit at a time because you want your nut mixture to be sticky, but not crumbly. You're going to also add to that a teaspoon of vanilla and three teaspoons of your walnut flavoring. Your walnut flavoring is the key. That's what makes Nan's nut horns different from everybody else's. So you wanna get that mixture to stick together not be crumbly, but not be drippy wet. You don't want it to be that moist or it'll just leak out of the sides of your nut horns. Now, once you have your nut mixture nice and sticky, but not crumbly, you can refrigerate that until you're ready to go ahead and start your nut horns. Now you're gonna get your flour mixture ready. Um, and your flour mixture is what you are going to be rolling your nut horns in. That flour mixture is um, about one cup of flour and two cups of sugar. 
that's what you're going to be using to roll your dough on because you want it to be like a sweetened flour. Um, you will take your refrigerated dough out, grab yourself about a baseball size, roll it out into a nice 14 inch circle, 12 to 14 inch circle. And then you are going to put your nut mixture on each one of your triangles. You should try to do 12 equal triangles, cut it in half, then in quarters, and then cut each quarter into three. You want to have a nice teaspoonful of your nut mixture. You don't want to overfill your triangle because if you do, your nut mixture is just going to come out the, ed the ends of your nut horn. You don't want that to happen. But you want to have a nice full teaspoonful. Once you have those tea teaspoonfuls on, then you're going to roll up your triangle. Wide end first. You're going to go from your wide end, roll it up until you get all the way down to the tip. When you get all the way down to the tip, you're going to pinch your tip to the rest of the dough to keep it nice and um, secure. And you're going to dip that top of your nut horn in pure sugar. Once you've dipped it in the pure sugar, then you can form a little arch to it and put it on your cookie sheet. I use parchment paper on my cookie sheet. I get two dozen of nut horns on my cookie sheet, eight in a row, three rows, and then you're going to bake them 350, about depending on your oven, until they are lightly browned on the top. Check them, start checking them around 10 minutes, um, depending again on your oven, but don't let them get too browned. And then you will have the best nut horn and also a sweet memory of your sweet nan. Love you.